So we're going to continue with Mishnah 18 in the second parak of Mishnah uh, of Pirkei Avot, um, with some teachings, three teachings of Rabbi Shimon, and he, of course, is the one of the pupils of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, and in an earlier Mishnah, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, who has been describing the spe specific qualities of each of his Talmidim, has described Rabbi Shimon as a yurei chet, as a person who is fierce. Uh, uh, is um, fearful of sin. So we have to presume, therefore, that the uh, teachings that he offers, offers us here are his own suggestions of the ways in which, thank you very much, then, the ways in which a person can overcome sin. The first one is as follows. Be very, very careful in the reading of the Shema and, and in the Tefillah. I think there are probably two reasons for this. The first is because certainly in relation to the Shema, in Gemur and Brachot, it ascribes to the Shema some kind of special mystical quality. It seems almost in the sense of what a mezuzah does for a home in terms of protecting it, the Shema does for a person's soul in terms of protecting it. And therefore, it speaks about the Shema at night, and it says it is like holding a person goes to sleep, holding cherub shall shtape fiot biyadav. He holds a sword, a double-edged sword in his hand, that would just schmeiss all of the negative influences that come during the course of the night. So the Shema therefore has this kind of special quality, and that's the first reason why he says one should be careful in reciting the Shema, because it holds the negative di dimensions of our lives somewhere at bay at some kind of mystical spiritual level, which of course most of us won't, won't understand. But the second reason is a lot more pashut, it's more, more understandable, and that is that if you look at the words, and you speak about that these words of your, your the words, these words shall be, Allah shall be upon your heart, right? and that you should love God, with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all of your might. This, of course, puts you in, a, in, a, in an emotional and in a mental and in a behavioral space that makes you feel that you want to be connected to God. And therefore, it's going to be a lot more difficult for a person to sin under those circumstances. So just when reading these words, thinking about them and trying to actually implement them and bring them into one's life is going to be the piece of advice that, he, that he's going to give. And there is a, this lovely story about Daniel, you know, Daniel who came, was one of the exiles, was a young, young child who was taken into the, into the palace, the Babylonian palace, because he was a public kid and he was very talented. And he and a group of other children were taken in and they were uh, given a terrific education and they were laid, all the beautiful food was, was laid on. And Daniel was this kid who simply was not going to follow the trend, he was not going to eat the non-kosher food. And the, uh, the steward, the cook, said to him, look, said, if you don't eat it, you will be, you will be um, damaged, but I'll also be in trouble because my job is to feed you, and if I'm not feeding you and testing you up, I'm going to be in trouble as well. And, and Daniel said, definitely not, no way. And but the reason is, because as the Pasuk says, how you had the rim, ha'elu allah these words were upon his heart, the same words from the Shema. And that's what gave him the strength to be able to withstand all of the negative influences which were around him, because he had taken the words of the Shema to heart in some very, very deep way, and he lived those words. So that's the first piece of advice from Rabbi Shimon, to be very particular and careful, rather than just babble the words, actually spend a bit of time thinking about it, even if the chazan is racing ahead. You take your time, read those words, certainly at least the first paragraph, and when it comes to tefillah as well, you stand before the Almighty, just try that special moment of connection, so we don't allow it simply to become totally habitual and just words which flow, because they're, they're so they're so familiar to us that they have ceased to have any kind of meaning.